We have guests today, Sherilyn, we have Dr. Kimberly Ellison, who is joining us remote. Dr. Kimberly, where are you located again? You have to let our viewers know where you're located right now. Oh, I'm I'm located across the globe, honey. Across the globe. No, I'm it's international. <laughs> listen, I don't know if you're in Dubai this week or listen, in the U.S. next week, but you are definitely making moves. I am so proud of you. I just have to let you know this. Oh, thank you, Amber. Thank you. But yes, we definitely cannot wait to uh, tap into this book that, you, uh, that Sparkle Publishing. Yes, if you're ready to release, and I cannot wait to be there for it. I'm here for it. But it definitely is entitled Spar it's entitled Sparkle. Powerful story yes. of transformation for women who discover diamonds in their in their cold budgets. Oh my god. Wow. You ready? So today, oh, um, yeah. the topics on today, we're going to also be uh, diving into um, just the transformation of identity and value. And some of those things include pornography, molestation, and just your uh, your identity overall. You know, sometimes we go through things and we let that try to consume us. We let that make us who we are, but that's not who we are and it's not who God has taught us to be. So. We are definitely going to have great conversation on today. So before we go any further, are y'all ready? I don't think y'all ready. Oh, yes. Ready? Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hey y'all, this is your host Amber and your co-host Monique. Y'all be sure to tune in to our show, Let's Gossip. Yeah, that's right, Gossip. G-O-D-S-I-P. Hey. Every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. Central. Our show is filled with hot topics, transparency, encouragement, and of course Jesus. So that's tune in and part. get your weekly tea served hot. And I look that warm only on Let's Gossip. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. This is your host, Amber. And your co-host, Monique. You are now tuned into Let's, Let's Gossip. Gossip. Where we serve your tea hot. And I look warm. And on this day, we have nothing but hot tea to serve. And because yes. it's super hot, we're going to go ahead and dive into it. But before we go any further, it's our custom to recognize our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Monique is going to lead us in prayer. All right. Dear Lord, we just want to first off just thank you for this opportunity to be here in your presence, God. We want to thank you for being able to speak to your people on today, God. We pray that you would decrease us in every capacity, Lord, and increase you yes, all Lord. the way, God. Yes, so Lord. that they will not see us, but they will only see and hear you, God, with everything that we have to deliver on today. We thank you for Dr. Kimberly, and we thank you for Sherilyn and for their testimony and for their encouragement and just their courage just on being here today and just speaking a word to all of us lord we thank you in advance for what is about to happen yes lord and we ask that you just be with us in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. amen. sparkle again shout out to you dr kimberly uh, for actually getting the authors together to share their testimonies and just out of curiosity I just have to open it up what inspired you to put these women together in their testimonies into one amazing book oh my goodness first of all can you say that it is vision and vision is what the Lord had given me mm -hmm. some time ago about helping women cultivate their stories in a way you know when we think about sparkle most of the time we think about or when we think about stories or anthologies, most of the time people will compile stories, um, Amber, that really tell the, the what happened. And the difference between Sparkle and why I was so compelled is it gives women 
a voice. It gives their story a voice across the world. And I totally believe that each author has been chosen for this moment in time. We are destiny connect. We are connected in destiny because of these stories and how they align. But the overall creation comes from a vision of really seeing women like the 10 authors that are um, identified in Sparkle to help share their sparkle with the world. Let me tell you, um, coal and diamonds, people think that coal diamonds are created from coal when in fact um, it's still a myth. It's still unknown. Mm -hmm. What really happens is that coal and diamond are created from carbon. So they both have to go through the same process mm -hmm. in order to produce, but it does a different substance. A diamond goes through a little bit more pressure. Mm -hmm. A diamond comes higher to the surface. And that's exactly what the Lord led me to do when we said Scribe Tribe 2019 is to help um, women around the world take the thing that was in the dark place and to help that combust and come all the way up to the top and share their stories with women and men around the world. Wow. And I might tell you that it is, it is absolutely amazing. I just, I just learned something new all today. Listen, I, I just had a whole, <laughs> like I had a whole, just a scientific, just a science just now. <laughs> yes, I just learned something new because, you know, a lot of people always use those myths. And they, well, they use those words, and those terms and quotes and stuff, but they really don't get the, the breakdown of it. And but that's how I know that this book is going to be absolutely amazing because you actually went beneath the surface in order to dig up these diamonds in the rough. So again, I'm grateful for having you uh, tune in with us uh, remote. And also I'm glad to have Sherilyn in the building with us on today. And I can't wait for you to be able to share your testimony and just a little brief background for you. How was it like for you when you were approached to uh, be an author featured in a book? Well, uh, I must say that it was uh, amazing. I was nervous. I mm -hmm. was very nervous <laughs> because this is life. This mm -hmm. is life. Mm -hmm. And um, just as diamonds go a little bit further, uh, you got to dig a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. This is life for the world to dig a little bit deeper into my life. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I didn't want to at first, but mm -hmm. I knew I needed to. <laughs> Because there are women and men around the world who uh, it's time for them to discover their own sparkle. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. it takes reading someone else's struggle, someone else's uh, going through the furnace, coming out, mm -hmm. uh, shining bright mm -hmm. to finally discover, you know what? I see me in that or I hear me in those words. Mm -hmm. So here I am. Here I am, world. Right. <laughs> well, I definitely. Oh my God, first, Amber! Can I add something to yes, that again? Um, because it's so funny. Because believe it or not, I've never met Sherilyn. And so uh, I've only known her through voice and even through video. And so I want to say that that is exactly the vision for Sparkle. But the thing when you um, talk about the book, Sparkle really goes beneath the surface of not just what the stories. People want to know what happened. But what Sparkle does, each author tells how. How did their now cold, their dark place become a diamond, a sparkle mm -hmm. for them. And that's the thing people really want to know. Like, it's mm -hmm. good to get the juice. It's good to get the tea. Mm -hmm. But what about when the tea has been served, how do you then now live beyond that process? Yeah. And that is what each author brings. When you think about identity and you think about um, finding value, it's we don't just talk about the story of mm -hmm. what happened where you get all excited. We talk about the how we got out of that dark place. Dr. Kimberly, how many authors are actually featured in this book? There are 10 authors um, featured in um, this book. And again, um, I don't know if you want me to say their names, but there are 10. Why not? Can we do that? Is that okay? Yes, that I want to give a shout fine. out to the, the women again, who were all month long. So go ahead and you can run down the authors oh. for us. Okay. Yes, because I just want to make sure that we honor those women who um, took and was courageous and took the road that really would, like Sherilyn said, it's like I had to do it for others. So there is um, Tanya McDermott, there's Heather White, Taryn Given, we have Stephanie Morrow, Stacey Dixon, we have Sherilyn Fidelis, who y'all hear um, from tonight, Lataria Peterson, Tamara Bunn, Katrina Mays, and Santonia Davis. These women are phenomenal, and we're going to, when I say rock the core of the earth, we're going to shake the core of the earth with sparkle. Amen. Oh my goodness. I can't wait. Listen, I'm going to have to... Uh... <laughs> 
I'm about to get a sneak peek into this book before the release. Oh my god! Oh yes. Right. Did we not get a sneak peek or something? Yeah. You know, give our listeners a little, just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. And, you know, we can talk about a little bit tonight, too. We talk okay. about identity and yes. how the transformation happens um, in the dark. But Sherilyn's story just really is a reflection of several women. I mean, if you read the stories, you'll see that several women around the world encounter such, um, you know, challenges, whether it's childhood. And so, Sherilyn, I don't want to spoil your story, but if you will, tell a little bit about the story um, to the listeners and to, so that they can kind of sh- get a little bit about what your story is. Well, my story, I like to uh, look at it as a um, crawl walk phase of my life dealing with love, mm-hmm. dealing with love. And um, the most, um, I won't say the funny thing, but the most ironic thing about the crawl walk phase of my life dealing with love is that I had love all wrong. Mm. I thought love was that magical moment that you see on Hallmark. (laughs) For all those who look at Hallmark Channel and you know how the story goes, the plot is always the same. Mm -hmm. Boy meets girl and boy says, she's the one, I know it. And it usually happens in a matter of days. Mm -hmm. And by 90 days, they're married. (laughs) And so... That was my thought process about love. And along the way, it was shaped by uh, different events in my life, uh, dealing with identity, um, dealing Mm. with pornography, dealing with molestation, uh, dealing with life. Mm -hmm. And not going to go too much into the book because if you're like me, uh, all those readers out there, Mm -hmm. you want to capture the moment mm-hmm. by the words mm-hmm. and the only way to do that is to get the book that way you can highlight and um take your time digest and discover yourself but definitely uh let's just say i am 40 years old and i finally got to walk phase two years ago mm. wow learning about wow. love real love and uh believe it or not wow love is a person and I finally discovered him, and I am enjoying uh, the everlasting love from the king. Amen. Amen. I know that's right. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. And it's not Amber, and, and you know, you um, ladies both there, I, I know you all are there, but I just think when we talk about the topic of identity, so many women, we struggle with our identity. And mm-hmm. if you really think about it, it all goes back to the stories like Sherilyn is sharing about love when we don't know um, um or we have so many fatherless daughters mm-hmm. um and i say that because in the natural we may have fathers who have come against us who were supposed to protect us but yet they um um violated us or you've had mm-hmm. fathers in your life who were absent yet um present at some state, but the Lord is always present and he has been a father to so many of us. And so it's difficult to find an identity when we're seeking identity in so many other things. And so when you think about my story, I always talk about really, I struggled with identity of um, it's all wrapped into rejection and really trying to, um, you know, dance for Um, everybody, like make everyone happy or, you know, not ruffle feathers um, and and, and not really make a commitment to the left or a commitment to the right. And I think many of us do that because we're really seeking identity. You know, we're seeking like, where do we belong? We want to belong somewhere. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was growing up. I never fit in. I never fit in. And that's a form and a sense of love. But when, um, when I talk about the story of really understanding my identity in Christ, I understood, like so many of us, that I wasn't designed and created, and I know this is cliche, but I wasn't designed to fit in. I was designed to stand out intentionally so that I could bring um, others and share my story so others can come to Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that's one of the most frustrating things growing up is, especially when God chooses you and you're trying to fit in, and it's just like nowhere. It's just like, okay, I'm here. But I don't really relate to you, and you're kind of doing too much, so I'm just kind of like in the middle. 
And right. then you move on to life and to the next chapter, and it's the same thing over and over again. And then you get to be in a oh, yeah. the same mm-hmm. thing over and over again. And just like, Lord, mm-hmm. <laughs> like show me who I am, basically, so I know what I need to do with it. Stop trying to fit into these different places that I don't fit. And then when you ask mm. him that and he show you, it gets lonely in that lonely place oh because gosh, he has yes. to get you a host to yourself so yes. where he can show you you mm-hmm. and that way you can develop that strong, intimate relationship with him. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like we ask him for it, but we don't we don't prepare ourselves necessarily for what's going to come with it. Right. You're going to lose some friendships. You're going to lose some relationships. You're going to lose some associations, affiliations, connections, all the above. But mm-hmm. however... I'd rather be connected to God if I was connected to nothing else in this world. Yeah. And that's just, Absolutely. That's just but true. if we knew what was beneath the surface, yeah. you know, it's like the coal and the diamond, they're created from carbon. So it's almost like I remember saying that when I was looking for love in all the wrong places, whether it was relationships um, uh, with me, because see, I know that left gossip, y'all keep it real on this show. Really? And so, and <laughs> you know, so it, it <laughs> and so, you know, we're looking for love in all the wrong places. I had daddy syndrome. You know, I lost my father when I was 12. And when my identity, I had a great relationship with my father. He died at age 35. So I would um, date older men not knowing it was a daddy syndrome. Wow. I suffer from daddy syndrome. And I would, you know, so when we think about that, it's a lack of identity leading to the love of God and not knowing what true love looks like. Mm-hmm. And you talk about um, being able to walk away from connections and relationships and putting those things down is and really discovering. And that's what a coal, when you're in a coal mining process, that's mm-hmm. what coal miners do. They are trying to discover what's beneath the surface. They're trying to dig a little bit. And that is what God does to us. And through Sparkle, that is what the stories tell, the digging process. And once um, you dig deep enough, after that, now you get to see the sparkle. Now you get to see the diamond. And so I'm just really excited about this topic because our identity, God is always trying to dig us, dig us a little deeper and give us um, a firmer foundation in him so that we can really stand firm for what he has on the other side of our tears. I wouldn't have cried so long, y'all. Mm-hmm. Had I known what was on the other side of that dark place, I wouldn't have cried so long. Right. Listen, <laughs> and Dr. Kimberly, is there a moment um, that you can think of that you can share with our listeners about a time where you were in a dark place and you have you discovered your diamonds? Oh, absolutely. You know, um, I think that mo- I think that most of the time when we go to go through a dark place for me specifically, it's those moments um, um, in one particular place. I, I know we have another segment. Um, I know we have another segment that we will um, cover as it relates to loss. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to say is one of the darkest moments um, for me, and I'll let the other authors talk about the loss and um, grief. So I won't say that darkest moment because I have lost um, a daughter at six months pregnant and I had to give birth to her. So I will let the other authors kind of share that story. But one of the other dark moments for me was when I actually was dating um, at a young age, about 20, 21 and dating. And what I found is I was trying to put my identity in, um, the guy I was dating. Mm -hmm. And it was to the point where I was, um, you start to feel your identity is wrapped in that individual and you don't know what to do. And in that, it became, um, a stalker type situation where that individual, um, actually had to, I had to actually go to, and I hardly ever share this story, but but, um, you know, I had to actually go to the courts and, and, and do the legalities of how to get out of that dark place. How do, how do I now um, fight for my life in a whole different way? And I remember laying, um, going everywhere I go, this individual would stalk me. This individual would um, um, cause havoc. Uh, I was so, uh, just when I say inundated with fear, um, it would cause so much fear in my life that I would sleep at my friend's house and drive uh, when I say over two cities so that I would not um, fall victim to this, you know, domestic violence um, type situation. And it was one of the darkest moments in my life. And I actually went out and I went into the gun range. I was advised to go get a legal um, weaponry. I, you know, I had a weapon, you know, the word, but we also, I had a peace be still as well. And so I was able to um, do that in a legal way, but I also had to go to court and I lost, almost lost my full identity. And I remember ladies saying, Lord, I know that you did not call me to this place in my life 
for this. Like I know right. that my destiny doesn't look like this. And for women who are out there listening, that was a dark moment. I'm telling you, I don't know, ladies, if you've ever been in a relationship where you, I mean, literally, the control is so out of normalcy. Like, you can't look to the left, you can't look to the right every time this person is after you. I'm I'm just being honest, because somebody's going to get set free from this story. Right. And I was able to lay on my face, and I said, Lord, and, and again, ladies, I had to cut off the dark place. I had to, in that place, I had to cut off those um, conversations, those text messages. We could not be friends. We couldn't do dinner. There, it couldn't be any of those things because I laid on my face and I said, Lord, if you deliver me, mm-hmm. I will not go back into this. Y'all, I could have been dead and gone. I'm telling you. And so those dark moments, I was able to discover um, who God called me to be. And I, that's when House of Ruth Jewels was born. So if you think about a dark place and cold, the Lord allowed me to have House of Ruth Jewels, which was a ministry for healing and restoration mm-hmm. for women. And we've been running House of Ruth Jewels, and so many women have been set free from domestic situations or domestic violence issues. So many women have been set free from identity crisis that we've had internally. They've been set free from depression and when I say rejection and all of these different things, loss and grief, just from that dark place. Mm. And listen, and Sheryl, how was it for you when you pulled your stuff out of that dark place, when you allowed God to actually, when you fully surrendered to him and so that you can let those distractions go? Well, I will say, uh, just listening to Dr. Ellison, I remember it took me back to this relationship and I was in a crawl phase by this time. I knew the Lord. I was saved. Uh, still am. Amen. <laughs> I want to use past tense. Right. And um, spirit filled, going to church, mm-hmm. um, in the praise and worship. I mean, you wouldn't know my life from Sunday to Monday, because it was like I lived two lives. I was mm. a dual person and I kept justifying it. And um, we don't keep it real. Mm-hmm. So the young man um, happened to be someone I worked with. And when I initially met him, I did not know he was married. He told me he was not. Mm-hmm. And along the way, just like Satan, he reels you in until he knows that he can go in and out your soul. Mm. And that soul tie, once that soul tie was there, then I found out that he was married. And um, Spirit of God living in me, of course, says run away. Mm-hmm. But the soul tie mm-hmm. was reeling me in deeper and deeper. And before I knew it, I was so deep that when I went on emergency leave um, to see about a family member and I needed someone and I called upon that person, he was actually with his wife tending to her. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, it cut so deep that on Sunday I was praising and worshiping and no one knew that the tears that were falling and the bending over crying was because I was completely broken. Mm-hmm. I, my character was out of character. Mm-hmm. I did not recognize wow. myself mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. And I just remember one day uh, I was so broken, I couldn't even go into work. I had to take that day off. And I just laid on the floor in the living room and cried and cried and cried. And I fell on my face before the Lord because he was all that I had at that moment. And I remember asking God, how did I end up here? Someone who knows you, who lives for you, who has come to understand that we as women and men We need affirmation. That's what's so connected to uh, unconditional love is that affirmation. That's what root and ground you to make a decision, a wise decision in life. And how did I separate myself from being affirmed in God to the point where my whole life was rooted in this man that didn't even belong to me? Mm -hmm. And so 
I had to face the fact when God spoke very boldly to me mm -hmm. and he let me know when you do not allow his word to have his way, mm -hmm. you lose focus. Mm -hmm. And for me, the word was patience. I was very impatient mm -hmm. and I went too far. Mm -hmm. I went too far, too quick, too soon. And in all, uh, God got me through it. It, it took a year and a half mm -hmm. to come up out of that, but out of it came, um, a, a wonderful ministry of everlasting love. And that's what I testify to, to the world. Uh, understanding that everlasting love in it is patience, wisdom, everything you need to make a wise decision in life so you don't have to build a soul tie, but you can learn to establish covenants and real relationships with people who celebrate you and affirm you in the word of God. Mm -hmm. so. Wow. Listen, I had to wow. I had to fight back some tears because people really underestimate that like you said when you was at church crying out sometimes it's going to be because God is so good. It's because you're broken. Yeah. You are broken Ooh. and you have no other resort at that moment. It's like God is it is us is it me or nothing. Like I don't know. You know. So that Hallelujah. right there brought tears to my eyes. Seriously, I'm fighting back tears because I'm telling you, when people are broken and you think that they just giving off a, a praise or, oh, she always screaming, she always hollering. You don't know what she's being released from, what she's been delivered from. Yes. You don't know how many times she is crying out to God to uh to break that uh, distraction, the connection. You know, sometimes, yes. uh, especially in our uh, the upcoming generation, you know, sex is so idolized. So a lot of times you love the wrong way because you don't know how to love the right way. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, but if you start oh, with yeah. God and love, you know, allow God to love on you, then you will know how to love on others and allow and know what is love. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, so overcoming so many things that's not even your identity, only for God to reveal who you truly are. Yes. I think that is so amazing. Oh my yes. goodness, y'all like amazing. listen, y'all. The key did y'all hear when Sherilyn said, you know, um, instead of a soul tie and connecting soul ties into that true covenant relationship mm -hmm. you know that is so deep because mm -hmm. if you think about identity and you think about DNA and how um, you are identified as an individual there are so many things in this life that contribute to our identity and so from childhood when we talk about these stories they tell you who you are mm -hmm. if you think about it people tell you what you should be doing or the experience share with you the experiences you have they now shape who you are, mm -hmm. but we never really find out our identity and our true value mm -hmm. until we discover who we are in God. I know that it sounds like the churchy and the religious things, but when you really go to the core of who you are, it goes back in Genesis 2 when he talks about how he created us and that we were created in his image. Mm -hmm. And when we think about mm -hmm. it, people always think image means how you look, but mm -hmm. see, image is how you act. It's not how you look. When you think about image, we were created in his image. That means we have the same power to activate everything that God did. And we have the same power. So when you think about image and identity, your image now reflects your identity when you know who you are in Christ. He, he gave us his full image which now creates our identity in him. And so it goes back to the full creation, our DNA below the surface when we begin to see ourselves like God created us mm -hmm. in his image. Yes. It's not just about what we look like, but it's what is on the inside of us and how we respond. It's how we act. It's our mm -hmm. daily devotion. It's our daily actions. So when someone says, I was created in the image of God, that's not necessarily just saying you're supposed to look like him. You're supposed mm -hmm. to look like him by how you act and how you behave and yeah. how what we receive and those relationships that we walk in. That is the image of God, which reflects the sparkle on the inside of us. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to just be quiet. No. <laughs> Listen, if y'all think y'all getting an earful now, y'all just make sure y'all tune in to Wow Wednesdays. It's Wow Wednesdays on KHBN, correct, <laughs> Dr. Kimberly? <laughs> yes, <it is>. yes. <laughs> 
but no yeah. that is absolutely amazing and i know we are wrapping up for time it just seemed like it came so quick yeah, due to yeah. the delayed start but however what else can we expect from this book dr Kimberly and uh arthur sherilyn and also not only that what are you expecting the readers to walk away with once they've read the testimonies from this from the book well sherilyn go right ahead um one thing that the readers can expect from the book is to be challenged in their walk mm. um, definitely every story tells you the digging the pain but the sparkle mm -hmm. and if you're not challenged in your walk to take a look to see Am I, just mm -hmm. as the Bible declares, letting my light so shine, mm -hmm. my work shine before men that they may see the good works in me and glorify the Father which is in heaven. If you're not challenged to check yourself on that, then uh, I highly encourage you to go back and, and keep reading the book. And the final thing, what will they or what do I expect the reader to get? And that is deliverance. Mm -hmm. And why can I expect that? Because God don't ever establish a ministry, whether it's in a book or it's um, us going live tonight. Everything is by divine order because his children are hurting. This mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. is not in perfection mm -hmm. as it used to be mm -hmm. so that tells me that we need a savior mm -hmm. and he comes in many fashions by using a book so i expect deliverance uh from the readers yes indeed amen wow yeah. wow let me tell you a couple of things um really quickly i know we're wrapping up but i want to encourage you all to get sparkle and i want to encourage you all to come out on october 13th we do have our book release um and our book signing so all 10 authors will be there um i will be there we will have less gossip on the diamond carpet but let me share with you every reader you will walk away with something. And let me tell you, you'll walk away with a little girl on the inside of you now becoming a woman because you'll hear stories of women who uh, rob young girls of their, um, their, in, their dreams from words that they said, but now that little girl walks and arises and it's the corporate girl rising. You will hear concrete roses from women who have lost and in a dead place, God grew up a rose that now they're blooming across the nation with um, um, organizations for their sons who they lost. They're blooming across the nation sharing um, and now their life and grief coaches. You'll hear women and you'll see stories and you can expect from moving from foster to adoption and how God has adopted us into his family because we have a story about how a young woman was adopted by her grandparents and she's not a foster. She is not an orphan. And she talks about how the Lord began to see, she began to see that as him allowing her grands to adopt her so that she can now truly live in a relationship with her mother. I'm telling you, you'll see transformation from relationships for women who've had had um, always had daddy issues, but yet now they can say that they're daddy's daughter. I can keep huh. going on and on about every story that you will read, but most importantly, as Sherilyn has said, you will not only read, but you will see the transformation happen as you read. It's going to go deeper below the surface so that you can now take the carbon, the dark place, the things, the combustion, every particle, every rock, every stone, every dirty place, and the Lord will again begin to transform it into the beautiful diamond that we all are. That is so amazing. Well, again, I thank you for joining us remote and also Sharon, I thank you for joining us on today. And I cannot wait for you guys to hear the just the remainder. Oh, month long is going to be amazing. Come next Tuesday, we are going to be discussing overcoming trauma. And that's going to be with authors uh, Stacy, Taryn, and Tanya. So again, we cannot wait to have you ladies with us. And we cannot wait for you all to tune back in with us on this gossip. So again, thank you, Dr. Kimberly, thank for you, always you. coming through. Cause yes. listen, you you Absolutely. Every time. It can be a high, and that high is going to minister to you. So, again, we <laughs> thank you, and we thank you, Sherilyn, for joining us on today. Thank and you to all. you all, just make sure you tune in again next Tuesday on 
Let's gossip. Yeah. Bye, Facebook. We appreciate you all for tuning in on today. Dr. Kimberly, we love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.